record. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Now we're recording. Yes. Okay. All righty. Hi, everybody. This is going to be our second beginner witch basics class, and it's over candle magic by me. So what is candle magic? Um, so candles can, you can describe them as one of the simplest forms of magic, like the one literally everybody. If you celebrate your birthday, you do this. If you blow on, the, on your birthday candles and make a wish, that is a type of magic. Oh, eco, jeez. Um, so candle magic, it's basically focusing your intent and man manifesting a desired outcome um, through the candles. And that is the base for a lot of beginner spell work. Uh, these candles, they can be used alone or with other magic practices, but really for magic, to practice magic, you don't need any specific tools. Like you don't even have to use candles in your um, practice if you don't want to. And first, before we even begin, I want to tell everybody that you should always practice fire safety. So you never want to leave a burning candle unattended. You don't want to leave it where your pets or small children can get to them and get burned. Um, and you always want to use a fire safe container or a surface so that things in your home don't really catch on fire. And it, um, when you're burning candles or herbs, you want to make sure that it's in a ventilated area so you're not going to suffocate yourself. Or set off your fire alarm like I have many times. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a different, a few different types of candles. The most common ones that you see are tea lights. And I have some examples, like I have this little tea light, it's blue. And then votive candles are a little bit taller. Um, I don't have one of those. And then there's tapers. They can be the long skinny ones like this one. I have a black one or just a smaller, a slightly chunkier one. These are both types of taper candles. And then there's pillars. Uh, those are really, really thick and round and tall. Um, this one I have is super huge. It's my big boy. It's literally as big as my face. And then there's, Funky. yeah, there's uh, also prayer candles. They can also be called vigil candles or devotion candles. Those are the tall ones that are usually in um, glass. Yes. <laughs> I'm so proud of this big candle. I got it for $5 at Target. <laughs> and then there's figure candles. Um, those usually are um, used with people who worship deities. They're um, dedicated to specific deities. And uh -huh, I really like this first one because it's a figure of a man and he also has a wick on his dick. <laughs> and then for candles, they're um, made out of different types of waxes. The one that you're gonna find most often in, can in candles bought in stores is gonna be paraffin wax or petroleum wax. Those are the most inexpensive types of candles you'll probably get, but they're not really good for your body or for the environment. If you want to go more natural route, you can use soy wax candles, there's palm wax candles, or beeswax, but those ones are usually a little bit more expensive. Continue. So for a lot of candle magic, people will use different colors um, for different um, like intentions. So here I have a little figure. It's just different colors and the typical associations with those, like black ones are usually for safety or protection. Um, red ones are usually for like love or strength. Um, and if you don't have, you don't have to have like a specific, like these, all these different types of candles. Um, like rosemary, it's a universal replacement for any herb. White candles can be used to replace any color. So it can be used for any type of spell. And then I just wanted to put a little reminder that associations are not set in stone. Like if you want to do a love spell for yourself and you don't have a red candle, you can still do the spell. Um, so different cultures and different practices, they have different uh, associations 
for colors and herbs. Um, I think in the Philippines, somebody said that red was for um, protection. Um, so some of them differ, but um, at the end of the day, you are the most powerful element in your craft. So just use whatever you feel you want to use and it'll be okay. Okay, so preparing your candles. Before starting any type of spell work, um, people usually take several steps to um, prepare their candles before they actually move on to the actual spell work. Um, you don't have to do these, they're not required, but people will cleanse the candles that they use. People sometimes say like on TikTok that the store-bought candles, they've been through so many different hands, so many different energies, that you'll want to cleanse it before you use it for your spell work. And then you can dress or anoint to the candle. This is usually with um, different oils, um, um, spreading it along like the side of the candle and then rolling it in herbs for um, the intentions that you're wanting. And then of course you want to set clear intentions. So if I was going to use this black candle for protection, I would um, dress it in protection herbs and while thinking about my intentions, like this is gonna protect me from any negative energies. And these steps, they can become a ritual that you perform every time before you do spell work. Uh, and they'll give you time to concentrate and meditate on your outcomes. Oh yeah, feel free to ask questions. Um, if I don't see them, somebody else may answer them. Okay. And so how to use candles, and again, uh, candles are not necessary for witchcraft, but they do have a lot of different types of uses. Um, you can use candles alone, but um, people will reinforce their intentions to make it a little bit stronger with different herbs, oils, carving sigils, um, to just give a little extra oomph to the spell. And so the main uses, the ones that I'm going to be going over are manifestation and spell work, protection, honoring your deities or ancestors, and different types of divination with candles. Okay, and the first one is manifestation. So like witch talk or witch blur, um, a lot of the candle spells that people talk about are going to be for manifestation. Um, they're usually a specific color and then dressed with specific herbs. Somebody's mic is really loud. Um, so for example, you would use a green candle with bay leaves for a wealth spell. And then you can um, light these, put them out, and then relight them like any time that you want to manifest your intentions. Yes, uh, this is being recorded and it's going to be posted later and the presentation will be as well. Okay, so, oh, and um, for most of the pictures that I put on here, they have links attached to them. So you can go onto those links and they'll take you to recipes or steps of how to prepare these different candles. So, okay. uh, the second type is protection. They are very similar in their purpose with manifestation candles. Um, they're usually used with different herbs, herbs and sigils because um, protection is a really big part of spell work, I think, because we always need protection. Um, you can also welt, um, melt wax blocks if you have leftover wax from drippings on your candle. And the, after you melt the wax with different herbs that you want, since it's just like a little mass of wax, you can place them around, um, like along the floorboards or on top of the doors for protection. Okay. And then honoring your deities or ancestors. Um, I just want to say, if you're just starting witchcraft, working with deities or your ancestors or entities is not really beginner friendly, but you can still worship um, these entities and give them offerings and create candles in their honor. So it's kind of just um, giving respect to them and not asking favors of them because that's not really beginner friendly. 
Um, so some people, they will buy candles for the purpose of honoring their deities or ancestors. Like um, I used to work with Hades and Persephone and I would always get Persephone either a pink or red candle and then Hades um, a black or purple candle because that was what they liked. But you can also use candles that you already have and dress them with sigils that are for that deity and herbs that you think that they would like. And people also use uh, figure candles for deity and entity uh, worship. Okay. Alrighty, and then the first form of divination is reading flames. Um, it's kind of just self-explanatory. It's just reading how the flame acts while um, you're interacting with it. And here's just a few um, explanations. Um, so if your flame starts standing taller, um, the thing that you're uh, thinking about is probably coming and you have been heard by you know, the spirits. Um, but um, you want to make sure that you're uh, trimming the wicks of your candles before you light them and do spell work because le leaving them longer can make them react differently. And yeah, it just burns better when you do it that way. So like longer wicks will usually crackle more and you could be misinterpreting that behavior with whoop, somebody raised their hand. Hi, I just Hi. wanted to ask, um, you know, when you're um, watching the flame and watching the candle burn down, do you still have to have your intention in mind and like meditate on that until the candle burns down? Um, you don't have to, <laughs> Joe, uh, you don't have to be like completely focused on it the whole time while it's burning down, but just like keeping it in mind and kind of paying attention to how it's reacting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So how, like, oh, so how much would you need to like pay attention to it in terms of keeping it in mind? And cause, um, the re when I was researching, uh, the candle magic in, mm -hmm. in itself, um, most of the um, books that I've read was that you need to keep, constantly keep your um, intentions in mind. And for me, like, I just find that to be, I get distracted a lot sometimes, or it's just right. that it's just too, you, it's, it, you just, it, it, watching a candle mm -hmm. burn down and having that intention um, as a focus point, it's just, it's just way too long. So I was just yeah. wondering yeah, how I long mean, would you need to? You can get distracted. You can do other things. Like after, I know after we did the Paganito in the server, um, mm -hmm. a lot of people um, stayed on Discord while their candle was burning down. So we were like having conversations while it was still burning and just look over um, every so often. So yeah, you don't oh, have okay. to be just completely like staring at it the whole entire time. Oh. Burning down. <laughs> okay, that, ma that makes it better. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, and then the second form of divination um, is reading the wax or scrying the wax. Um, this is usually done with like a pitcher or a really big bowl of water. Some people say you have to use like pure water, purified water, not just stuff you get from the tap. Um, but you use what you have, honestly. Um, so I have a couple steps, uh, like simple explained steps for how you can do it. Uh, oh no, sorry. Um, how you start scrying or reading wax. And this is kind of a more um, intermediate form of divination because interpreting um, wax can be kind of difficult. Um, so whenever you want to start scrying wax, you'll want to make sure that your space is cleansed and thinking of a question that you want answered. Um, and then you can pick a specific candle. A lot of, um, I guess, websites said that you need two different candles um, of specific colors, but it can really just be any candle. Um, you let, light it and then let the wax burn down a little bit so it has um, like a little pool around, like enough that you want to spread on the water. 
And then when you feel that it's burned down enough, let the wax drip into the water. And you'll want to do it a little bit slowly and like move it around so that it doesn't just plop in one big mass in the middle of the bowl. And then um, let the wa uh, wax drip as much as you want. Uh, be careful not to let the wax get along the side of the bowl because that can mess with um, the meanings, I guess. And don't let the flame burn your hand, obviously. And then when you feel that it's um, dripped enough wax, you will just let the candle out and then let the wax harden a little bit and start taking out pieces and looking for um, symbols, um, letters, numbers, or any like distinct shapes or figures. Um, Des, I know you did this not too long ago. Would you like to talk about that? Yeah, um, so I learned it from Elsie actually, and Elsie is going to be teaching a wax divination at some point for you guys. For you guys, um, I was a guinea pig. I will say, out of all for like all of the forms of divination I do so far, this is the hardest one. And the hardest, uh, the reason it's the hardest one is because unlike pendulum and unlike tarot, there's no specific meaning. It's going to be a hundred percent up to your tuition. Um, so you have to really build up your tuition to it. Um, there were like. I, I like I would read I would look at it and like I'd get Elsie's opinion on it and then I'd look at it the next day and actually found out the meaning the next day. So it may not you may not even register it right in that moment. It might you might have to look at it a different way. You also have to look at it from all angles and also look at the front and also look at the back. So you're looking at all different perspectives. It could be until one clicks and registers for you. Um, let me think. Um, yeah, when Elsie had me do this as well, um, she she did um, like for me it was different. Um, it was a it was it was spirit work with divination, so it was a little bit different um, in the sense that I had to focus really hard um, and like she wanted me to focus on the flame as much as possible. Um, but it's because I was asking a specific. A specific spirit to come through um because I, I was trying to identify what spirit was around um but I will say it was it was fairly difficult the reason it's not beginner friendly isn't because it's unsafe it's just because it's challenging to read so it's not a matter of safety at all and um, this is fine it's just it's really hard to do um like I've probably only done this maybe five times or something mm -hmm. um and it's not something you would just like frequently do because um yeah, it's, it's just, it's not, you can use it in daily practice, but I would say it, it would be challenging to do on a daily practice. Um, so it's kind of for larger things in my opinion, but you know, divination, divination. Um, I will say that Albulario would use this. Um, and this is one of, I don't know where Eco is, but this is one of the ways Albulario would um, do diagnoses. Um, so if, if you don't know what Albulario is, Albulario is the um, is a form of witchcraft. Um, and again, here we recognize witchcraft as being a large spectrum of things. Older Filipinos are going to say Albulario are not witches, they're healers, et cetera, et cetera. We can have that debate all day, but Albulario would use this. Um, and so for example, um, if it was duende, right, the picture that would usually form is like a duende in the shape of the wax. Um, another example is like maybe a duende in a tree, like in, in the hole. Um, and they would like say like, were you, did you go into like hide into a tree that was like open? And then the patient might be like, yeah, I did. And they're like, there was a duende in there. That's why you got sick because you ran into the duende. So those are some of the ways that it was utilized um, or this is actually, this is still very much utilized which is why like Elsie knew about it. Yes, um, yeah, so yeah, it's a form of diagnosing. So when I say diagnosing, I mean, um, I mean, in terms, Mankakulam also use it as well, because again, there's a lot of overlap with Al Albulario and Mankakulam. Um, in terms of like the practice is like, again, both use oracions, both use like uh, similar forms, similar forms of things. We, we went over this before, um, but if you have Manco questions- Mankakulams use oracions a little bit less, but- Yeah, That's yeah, and, and it depends too, because Eco actually doesn't use oracions. So it depends on hereditary practices that are gonna differ from family to family. Um, but in terms of just like this, uh, when I say diagnosing, that's spiritual diagnosing and it, it could be also physical, but it's usually more spiritual. So it's, or sorcery illness. So spiritual, 
um, illness would be like getting sick from duende, um, as an example, as their spirits. Um, and sorcery illness would be like a curse or a hex from like someone. So those are two different uh, illnesses that could be diagnosed by wax. Yeah. Yep. And then I guess I would say the wax scrying is really similar to I think tastiomancy, the reading the tea leaves, because um, just random shapes will appear and you'll have to find them and figure out the meanings of those. Um, Alrighty, and then you can also read the behavior of a candle while it's burning. Not the flame behavior, but the actual candle. Um, this is usually with the vigil or the prayer candles, the ones in the glass. Um, people really like to interpret um, the wax, how it behaves in the candle and the soot around it um, to determine how effective the spell that they did with that candle will be. Um, so here's just a couple explanations. These also have a link to them to another website, which has more in-depth explanations of these behaviors. So one of them that I found said that um, once you did your spell and let the candle burn down, if it left more than half an inch of wax in the bottom, then the spell wasn't really effective or it may only yield like partial results, like it only did it halfway. Um, if there was wax left along the sides while it burned, it may mean that the spell worked, but there's extra stuff that needs to be done, probably mundanely, or that there's just unfinished business with that situation. Okay, we have 10 minutes left. <laughs> um, so in 10 minutes, the room will close and you can just click the link again and pop back in and then we'll keep going. Um, um, okay, and then if there's black soot around, like in this top picture right here, it usually is considered negative and that the spell is facing blockages, or it could just mean that the spell can't really help unless you do the mundane things first to solve that problem. And then white soot is usually considered positive and can signal that the spell is receiving help from the spirits, whether that just be your deities that you're working with or your ancestors or your guides. Alrighty, and you can also make your own candles. Um, if there's leftover wax, you can remelt it and then pour it into other vessels to make new candles. You can also remelt the wax and add different herbs, oils, um, based on your intentions and just make them look pretty and smell good. Um, on this bottom middle picture, um, you can reuse the little tins that come with the tea lights. If it's plastic though, I wouldn't really reuse these because plastic isn't just, it isn't very good when it gets reheated and will just smell gross. And also don't reuse glass um, that your candle comes in. If you reheat it and cool it and reheat it multiple times, the glass will explode. And that's not good. <laughs> so um, these two, top two pictures is a reused tea light tin. And it also uses the, I guess, the little white stringy part of an orange on the peel to reuse as a wick because those burn pretty well with the wax. And then on the bottom, I have um, a couple little candles that, that are, a ah, couple candles that use seashells as the vessel and just a little tiny bit of uh, twine as the sticks. Yep. And these all have recipes linked to them, so you can go check those out. And then some people don't like candles or it, some people who are like in the broom closet can't use candles for spell work, really. Um, so there are a couple different options for those. You can use wax warmers, you can mix the wax with different herbs and oils, and then oil, wor oil warmers, pretty much the same thing. Um, I was kind of surprised. Um, I've seen a couple of things about people using oil diffusers or like the um, humidifiers and adding some essential oils and herbs into the water. I don't know how good that would be, getting clogged up with herbs. 
Uh, from a uh, traditional Chinese medicinal standpoint, um, if you're using an oil diffuser, please do not use a uh, whole essential oil, uh, um, essential oil blends. Please don't do that because it puts other types of oils into your body and mm -hmm. into your lungs and it's hard to get back out. Um, so if you're using an oil, let it be like a few drops of the essential oil in water. Yeah. Yes. Always be safe. And then you can also use the flameless candles or electric candles. Um, I've seen a lot of these at like Walmart and dollar stores. Um, and they usually come with like a little um, remote. So you can actually change like the colors of the electric one to fit um, your intention, which I think is pretty cool. And then how to extinguish your candles. This, I guess people don't really think about this as like, it's just an unimportant thing. Like I just blow out my candles. Um, but some people think that it's, disrespectful, I guess, to the element of fire or um, to the deities or the entities the candle may be dedicated to. And I've also heard some people say that it's blowing your intentions away. So the spell becomes ineffective after that, I guess. I don't know. People have a lot of different beliefs. Um, so if you don't want to blow out your candles, you can use a couple different other methods. This picture right here is of a snuffer. So you just put it over the flame and it just suffocates it and you don't have to deal with, um, I guess that well, smell. And then um, dipping the wick also reduces the smoky smell, candle smell, I guess. Um, they just use like a little stick or like the end of a pen and uh, dip the wick into the wax. So it extinguishes it and it just recoats the wick and wax. And then some people, I don't like doing this, um, use your fingers, you just lick it and then pinch the flame. But that, if you don't do it the right way, it could be really painful. You get wax all over you or just the fire will burn you. But if, I, if all else fails, I guess, you can just drip like a few drops of water onto the flame and it'll take it out super easily. And then here I just have a few links to a couple other resources. Um, yeah, I, yes, I have uh, links to all the, most of the pictures that are in here. So you can look through those. There's a bunch of resources in there. And then just a few other ones like introducing candle magic and a little bit more in depth of other things, yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Can I add something in really quick? Yeah. Um, so like for so for an example, what a candle, like one of my candle spells of what I do. Um so like when I'm doing a banishment, um, oh it got blurry, but mm -hmm. hold on. Um so I carve a banishment sigil onto this. And then after I carve the banishment sigil, I oil it and then I roll it in banishment herbs. And then I put it in uh, my spell tray and then I make a circle of protective herbs and banishment herbs around the candle so it can be affected. Um, obviously trim the wick. Um, and then I burn it through. And for me, because it's a banishment, I burn it all the way down because I, in my practice, um, I feel like the, the, the spell has to be completely burned down for it to be complete. Um, so that's an example of like a specific candle um, spell. Um, another thing I was going to add is when you're doing candle magic, you're going to notice the effectiveness of the spell and the energy of the spell is going to show in how the flame looks. So I've had experience of where um, I've had like four candles dressed the same tea light candles. And then for some reason, um, a single um, one of the candles completely like engulfed itself. Like, they were all dressed the same. And so for me, what that means is that candle 
specifically had the most energy um, because I did also call upon a different um, anito for each candle. So this was actually recently. I'll post it in, in probably maybe candle or divination or candles. Or no, I'll, I'll post it in spell so you guys can see the picture. But um, I called upon a specific spirit for that one. And the energy was just massive in comparison to the other ones. Like tea light candles, typically, if you're going to burn them, don't engulf. It completely engulfs like this high, like this high. So it's huge. Tayat, exactly. <laughs> I was just mm -hmm. like, oh, hello. Um, so when you're doing your spell work, the flame will be telling you um, how much energy is like how, how effective the spell is working and how strongly it is. Um, that's something to pay note of. If you need help, send a picture of it. Feel free to send it to us and we can help you um, determine that out. Um, that was kind of what I was going to go over. Do you guys have questions other than that? Yes, questions. We have one minute oh. until the room closes. Oh, if you guys want to, uh, we'll reopen it if you guys have more questions because there's 30 people in here. For free starting candles, how do we keep them? You, you melt the bottom mm -hmm. and then you, you stick, stick it down it. on something. You stick it on something that is flame friendly. Mm -hmm. So ceramic, glass, steel, uh, metal, that is fine. Um, be aware though with glass that over time of using glass, the glass may break. This happened to me recently with my, my glass tray. It broke. Did it shatter? It didn't shatter. It just created a straight line and broke in half. Um, but yeah. Yes, you can do candle offerings. Um, that's not, it's not work. So you guys can do worship. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and head over to the VC. Okay. Yeah. I'll just wait there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm answering the question. Go ahead, Ray. Take over. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions? <laughs>